And so for that reason, we need something that can make the spark happen a little bit sooner and sooner and sooner so that it continues to happen at the right point in that cycle. So now how do we accomplish this at the distributor? Well, I'll show you. Okay, inside of your distributor then, you have a two-piece shaft. This top part is not connected on the bottom. It just swivels on it. And you have these weights as well. It's a little bit sticky because this is just a rusty extra one that I've got, but the concept is, and you might not be able to see this that well, but when the weights are thrown out, it will twist one shaft on the other and it will advance it, you see? That pawl arm just sort of stops it there. That's gonna be your maximum advance. And then this one will be a little bit easier to see because I could just push in on them. When you let off the throttle, the weights are gonna be pulled back in by the spring and the shaft is gonna twist the other way. So what's that doing? Well, two things, one, it's changing how far forward or not forward your rotor arm is. But the second and more important thing is you've got the lobes that open and close your points are going to be opening and closing sooner or after a little bit more time. And so this is the mechanical advance. And again, when you speed up the engine, the faster you have that engine spinning, the more these weights are going to want to be thrown out, the more it's going to be able to overcome the springs that are holding it in place, and it will spin out farther. And that's what's going to cause it to advance more and more as the RPMs increase. As a second thing on this distributor that somebody has disabled on the one we were just working on, and that is this vacuum advance capsule. A vacuum advance if you look down in this distributor, you see a little spring there, right? Maybe you can see it. That's this spring up here. And if you introduce a vacuum, it's going to cause that spring to move. So what's that gonna do? Well, the plate that the points is attached to is on a swivel. Now this of course goes up here underneath the spring. I'll show you on a blank points plate here. So again we'll introduce our vacuum. Hi, my name's Fred. Never mind. Such a stupid joke. Okay. We'll have a vacuum on it, and now you're turning the points plate. So there's two ways to advance a distributor. You could either advance it mechanically by throwing out the weights, and if you throw out the weights, it's going to twist it, and you are going to make your rotor advance. Okay, just imagine that's advancing, right? Or you can have a vacuum that turns the points plate and brings the points in the other direction. It doesn't matter if you bring the points clockwise or if you bring the rotor counterclockwise. It's the same thing because what's important is where they are relative to each other. And what we're looking for is as this pointer is going around, when we speed up the distributor, you should see it advancing. So we'll set it at a zero here. Use that one, keep your eye on it. So let's speed it up. What I want you to notice is two things. First of all, notice that the pointer is speeding up. 
advancing, I should say. But the second thing that you're going to see is that it's not entirely stable. And you can see the pointer is kind of wandering. That pointer is going to wander for one of a couple of reasons. Slow it down so you can hear me. So you saw the pointer wander. You know, kind of back and forth a little bit like this. And that could be down to a couple of reasons. Uh, reason number one is I just may not have it tight enough, uh, although it seems like I do, so. Yeah, that's in there. Uh, a more common reason is that this one is running points. And depending on the quality of the points you get and the quality of the condenser, your spark might be jumping around because this may not be opening and closing in a consistent fashion. Okay, so your points may be just bad uh, and, and replacing them might help if you happen to get a good set. It also might not. Uh, I had a car once where the spring tension here, uh, which was keeping the points closed, I had a car where that spring tension wasn't enough as the RPMs increased. And so um, the points would just start to float, basically. They wouldn't close all the way at higher RPMs. And I, I couldn't, for the longest time, figure out why it wasn't going over a few thousand RPM. Um, you could also have, actually feel it a little bit, the shaft tends to wobble. Uh, if you remember, it's, first of all, it's a two-piece shaft. And then secondly, there is a special bushing to keep the shaft in place and located in this housing. And that tends to wear over time. And so what you end up getting is your shaft wobbles. And if your shaft is wobbling, you're going to get inconsistent timing on your points opening and closing. So what do you do about that? Well, a couple of things. Uh, thing number one is in your housing, you can send it off to a specialist you can have that bushing pulled out and a new one installed, have it reamed out so that it's a perfect fit. Uh, there is a very, very tight tolerance on that. Uh, so you need to make sure it's perfect, otherwise you're not fixing anything. The easier thing that you can do is to toss in an electronic ignition. So we'll talk about that. Let me turn the light back on for you here. The whole point of an electronic ignition system now is basically to replace all of this crap. You don't need the condenser, you don't need the points, because it's just an electronic means of opening and closing a contact. Um, this is a mechanical means. It's either touching or it's not. When it stops touching, now it's making contact. Now it's not. Now it is. Now it's not. Now it is. That depends on a lot of things. You're depending on the mechanical pressure from the spring. You're depending on how good these contacts are. You're depending on whether or not the shaft is gonna wobble back and forth or be in a fixed position. You're depending on whether the condenser's doing its job. So there's a lot of parts that are going to make that either work perfectly or less so. Uh, and you can, uh, and I've done this successfully, you can buy a better set of points. Uh, there are uprated versions uh, that will work. You might need a specific points plate for those to be installed. Um, I think there's, there's one that has a higher, in a TR6 anyway I'm talking, uh, there's one that has a higher post that the points fit over. I think you need that, but anyway. Uh, you could also just as easily go to an electronic ignition. It's gonna do the same thing. It will be more reliable in that um, you can set up a set of points to be perfect, but it's not going to last because this is going to wear down as it's mechanically rubbing. And you do that enough times, it's going to wear down, which means your points gap isn't going to stay perfect. It's going to change the dwell, and it's just not going to run as well after a while. That's why usually about every oil change, you have to go in and reset the points. Uh, you don't have to do that with an electronic ignition. Uh, so my advice now, if you're only driving a couple hundred or a thousand miles in a year, stick with the points. Why would you waste the money on something else? Uh, you can get a set of points for under $20. I, I think you can anyway still. And why would you spend a hundred and something or $200 and buy a system 
to replace the points when the only real advantage of that system is that you're not going to have to set the points. Well, if you don't drive very far, you're probably never going to have to set the points anyway. So an electronic ignition for me is a really good idea either if you have a high mileage car that you're using all the time or if you've got the shaft is wobbling because it can take out the effects of that wobble. The shaft will still shake around a little bit, it just won't matter. And so you can get a lot more mileage out of a distributor without sending it to a specialist to get it rebuilt. The important part to this that's often overlooked are those springs. And you might have seen when it was advancing, and we'll just use this, when it was advancing, it was going from here to maybe here, which is about nine or 10 degrees. Um, I've had this distributor apart, the other one's a little bit more, but this distributor is supposed to go 13 degrees. It should be going a little bit farther. So there should be more travel on the advance. And what ends up happening is those springs start to get weak, but that's basically it. The thing that you really have trouble testing when you're building these is that you probably don't have a sun machine in your shop at home, and I do. Um, so I, I'm happy to help you with your distributor if you, if you like. I do uh, work on these for other people, uh, but if you're doing it at home, you need a timing light, okay? Uh, if you plug in your timing light and run the engine at different RPM, have a helper set it at different RPM, just kind of hold the throttle in place, or just adjust your carburetor throttle stop so that your engine is spinning faster if you're by yourself. Have a timing light and make sure that you're checking where it is on that crank pulley. And as you go to different RPM, you could see how many degrees of crankshaft advance is it changing. If it's not changing, then your distributor advance is not working. You've got to take it apart and make sure that everything's cleaned up. Sometimes you can get by with just oiling up the weights. Uh, well, I say oil, be careful. A little bit of light grease is really all you need. Just make sure that nothing's sticking. Um, but sometimes you can get away with that. Check it again, make sure that it's working. But if you have not enough advance, or more common what happens is that you speed up the RPM and then when you slow them down, it doesn't retard, it just sticks in that advanced setting. If that's what's happening, you're not going to get your timing set up correctly, and you're not going to get the full advance, and your car just isn't going to run as well. And so it's a good idea, if you want your car to run well, pay attention to your distributor, because that's going to cause many more issues than your carburetors are. Unless your car's been sitting and your carbs are filled with varnish, there's generally not going to be much of a reason to rebuild it. You almost never have to do it once it's done the first time. So pay a lot more attention to the distributor. If there are questions that you have, post them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, make sure you've got a good shop manual. Uh, your shop manual is going to be able to give you information like which distributor do you have that you're looking at and that at a given RPM on either the crankshaft or on the distributor, how much advance should you have uh, and what's the range? So it's going to give you the information that you need to make sure that your distributor is actually working properly. Uh, if you have a distributor that's not working properly, it can be rebuilt. Uh, it's easier sometimes to send it to somebody because if you're doing it in the car, A, it's very loud, and then B, if your distributor is not working properly, your engine RPM might not be steady to begin with, so it's going to be difficult to read. And so uh, happy to talk you through what I can and then uh, help you rebuild things if you need it beyond that. And outside of that, like, comment, subscribe. I hope this was helpful. I showed you a 22D distributor, technically a 22D6 distributor, uh, which is out of a Triumph TR6. They are all the same. Uh, really, there's not a whole lot of differences. If you've got a Lucas distributor or a Delco distributor, the principles are all the same. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's, that shaft can wobble. Your points are opening and closing. It's a switch that turns on and off the charging of the coil and then has the field collapse and it fires directs it to the right spot. That's all the distributor's really doing. And the, the trouble is that it's a mechanical object. So it freezes up, it, uh, the weights stick, uh, the springs have issues uh, in terms of how they're pulling the weights back. And so again, if you've got questions, let me know. Happy to help. Outside of that, I'll see you guys next time.